Logs go in on one end and come out the other. Perfect firewood. Ain't that just about the neatest thing you ever seen? Where was this when I was a kid? I'm gonna be honest with you, when I was a kid, I was the firewood processor. In all seriousness, one or two people with this firewood processor can make a dang good living. It will flat more, rip through some logs and make some good looking firewood. Before we get going too much further, let's talk about the specs of this unit. This unit can handle a log 16 inches in diameter up to eight foot long in any species. I've yet to have it not go through something. So we make two types of firewood. We make the kind you'd heat your house with, like cherry, oak, or hickory, or any other kind of wood will be used for campfire. Let's get this video started. Hey, I'm glad to have you back. We are going to talk today about the Blacks Creek Innovation Firewood Processor Model 1250 and the Model 1650 Conveyor Belt. I've had a lot of questions over the last year about this firewood processor, and some questions are simple like, what is a firewood processor? Is a firewood processor better than a log splitter? So those are some of the questions we're gonna to try to ask or answer today. And then if you have any additional questions, please leave them in the comment section below. So we're gonna walk you through the process and then we'll actually show it work. Uh, we roll the log onto these arms, the arms lift up, they go onto the deck. This deck is tied into the splitter itself and it moves back and forth. So you roll the log up here and then you move the deck forward. As we move the deck forward, you have a uh, holder here that keeps the log from coming back. And that one, you slide the deck basically out from under the log. Then it has a 20 inch bar chainsaw right here that's run off of the hydraulics, very, very strong. And you, you saw the log off uh, and then it drops the end into the splitter area. Uh, from there, you can set this splitter head up and down and then it'll split out, go up the conveyor belt and drop into our container. And one more thing we use for this is we got we keep here uh, is a tractor. Uh, we got the little tractor, we got the little T264 tractor back here with forks on it. And we have a chainsaw and we have a cant hook. I recommend a little battery power blower so that you can blow off all the excess chips and just keep your equipment clean. It's nice to have around. So that's a lot to take in, a lot of talking. Let's go do it. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Our firewood processor has a couple of extra options and this electric start is one of them. We have a little pull start on the conveyor belt, but it's easy enough to start. Another option is the uh, hydraulic log lifter here. Th this is an option. They have tables and several different setups. So if you are really interested, check out their Blacks Creek Innovations website. That'll give you a lot more information on their options. Once the firewood processor shows up with a little bit of setup, very little setup, putting some oil in the engines, checking everything out. It's ready to go to work. This Elm log got slipped in. It's a fair firewood. As I said earlier, I've run pretty much about every kind of wood through it that we have around here locally, including the Elm. Elm is a really nasty wood. Until this point, whether or not he oak, Elm or Hickory, I have yet to run, against, uh, run up against a log that it wouldn't split. You know, I can just about smell that cherry wood burning. I cannot lie, I did cut down the cherry tree. The firewood processor will work standalone, but if you put it with a conveyor belt, it takes in an additional layer of labor out of the scenario. I'm not sure I could say that again. Anyway, with the conveyor belt, it can really make this a one person operation. You can adjust the chain that's hanging down from 12 to 24 inches with a two inch increment in between. So that's your measuring stick. So you just bring the log back to the chain hanging down, hold it and cut it. I'm gonna do my best now to answer the question, do I prefer a log splitter or the firewood processor? Which one's the best? Well, the answer is this. They're not even really the same beast. Even though they both split firewood, they're in a different kind of category. 
if you're just a homeowner and you burn firewood, then a uh, log splitter is probably the right thing for you. But this firewood processor can split and process enough firewood in a day uh, that would probably take you a week or a couple of weeks uh, with a conventional log splitter. You just you know, mostly it's gonna you're gonna run out of steam yourself before the log splitter does. This firewood processor takes out a tremendous amount of the labor. Black's Creek has went out of their way to just make this easy to uh, you know, to maintain yourself. Like it uses a conventional bar and chain that you can get at any chainsaw store. There's really nothing special about that. Also, almost all of the parts, like your hydraulic pump, hoses, fittings, bearings for the wheels, they're just all you know standard stuff that you could get at your farm supply store. There's very few things that are proprietary on this machine. It'll be easy to maintain. Both the firewood processor and the conveyor are both pretty easily transportable. Uh, they have they have they recommend only going 45 miles per hour with them. I will be honest and say that I, I did ease up to 55 miles an hour just to see how they handle, and they followed and towed absolutely uh, great. But do keep in mind that that is not what is recommended by the company. In this little video clip, we're finishing up this uh, IBC tote of firewood, and this is this is red maple. So we, you know, we will use red maple in in firewood for a house. Our primary is oak, hickory, and some elm actually, but we'll burn red maple also. So this will all go to our shop for this winter. When we first started talking uh, to Black's Creek about getting a firewood processor. The conveyor belt was kind of on the chopping block. It was, you know, the additional cost of the conveyor belt. But I'm really glad that we went ahead and went with the conveyor belt because every piece of wood that you've seen fall off this or come off of the firewood processor would have had to be picked up by hand. And it, it'll pay for itself in labor and back pain uh, to be able to drop this uh, firewood off into the IBC tote. So I kind of wanted to know how much wood would fall out at this scenario using this IBC tote. And literally, four pieces of wood fell out of the tote before it was full. So I can live with picking up four pieces of wood. Having a stout little tractor to move this around with makes it a lot easier too. So what I'm doing here is I'm taking my leftover scraps from the sawmill and I'm gonna cut them up and use them for firewood in the shop as well. I will put them in a separate tote because I might end up just using it for camping, but it, it's, you know, we don't wanna waste anything. So I hate to do this to you, but drone video doesn't have sound, obviously. It flies in the air, there's no microphones. And Tanya got some really cool shots here and I recommend you watching this because it gives you perspective that you just can't see otherwise. Unfortunately, I just had to put some corny music in there and I hope you can bear with this. Well, I can do this to keep you from having to listen to the corny music. I'll tell you this little quick story. So Tanya's really getting good with the drone and she's doing some pretty cool shots here. Well, I am, you know, working this machine and it's kind of loud and the motor's running and all of a sudden I feel this cool breeze over my head and I look up and the drone is maybe about a foot over my head with the little blades turning, you know, several thousand RPMs. And I don't know if anybody out there has ever grabbed a drone out of the air and missed and hit the blades, but this old boy here has done that. You don't want to get into those blades. Hey, I really appreciate you watching our channel. God bless and have a great day. Do you think there was an ulterior motive when Tanya was asking about my life insurance? 